hello everyone it's genesis again welcome to another tutorial and today i'm going to be teaching you guys how to uh, take your um eye, eye poly and bake them into your low poly mesh that's um taking your low poly out of zbrush and taking your eye poly details into your low poly like as you can see here this is a low poly this is the eye poly you can see all the details that i sculpted here in zbrush and the idea is i want to take this detail into a mesh like this and um, that's what I'm going to be showing you and now you can work with this and uh, how you can take it to uh, what they call it in ZBrush I'm sorry in substance painter and you can start painting your um, textures so um, I'm just going to show you my workflow what I usually do I don't export my eye poly mesh and my low poly mesh together I export just my low poly and I export uh, uh, my normal map and my displacement map and I bake my I use my normal map into substance painter. I don't bake my normal maps in substance painter because uh substance substance painter does not know how to it's not good at baking low high high amount of polygons like as you can see this is nine million this is nine million polygons that would be a lot for substance painter to bake i've tried it it doesn't really work except you're working with something like maybe three million polygons probably it's gonna work but this is nine million when you start going to nine ten twenty million it's usually and it usually just messes up for me anyway so i just want to show you the way i use it and it's actually faster instead of just exporting two me uh, meshes together and trying to bake it in um, substance painter i'm just going to show you my own way and the fastest way and the best way and uh not the best way there are always other ways anyways moving on let's 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 move let's start this tutorial okay the first thing we're going to do is go to um, z plugin and we're going to go to multi map exporter and click on this so it can come out here make sure your displacement map in displacement is turned on and your normal map your normals are turned on it's just this what this means is this displacement map this normal map if you're working in animation or film you want something like this if you want if you're working in games or you're doing real-time rendering you just need this because real-time rendering doesn't work with displacement map at least to the best of my knowledge or oh, at this time anyways but so i work with um, um pre-rendering which is um rendering in um, packages like arnold or v-ray so i usually use this and displacement map is really powerful it has a lot of information into it and and normal map actually fix the um the um details that you you get why displacement map actually deforms the mesh so uh let's move on so you want this to be turned on and the next step we're going to do is um make choose the resolution of your map i usually use 4k that's 1496 and uh you can use 2k or 1k it doesn't really matter it just depends on what kind of project you're working on if you want a lot of um, resolution in your texture you choose 4k sometimes people use 6k or 8k i think 4k is enough so i use 4k you can choose 2k 2k is okay too anyways and the next step we're going to go to is file name on the file name we have tiff dot tif means tiff is an image format um i usually just use this i don't change it to png or tag or whatever it's a tiff is a very good format it has a lot of information and i think it's lossless so that's a plus so you can see the file extensions these are the file extensions name the extension name so you leave all this this doesn't really matter and we can actually rename them if we want except you're working with udems uh we're not working with udems yet i am i'm going to create a udem tutorial later in the future but we're not working with udems uh if you're working with udems you might have to change your file extension especially for displacement map or the maps actually if you're baking um, normal map displacement or vector or texture you have to change the uh the file extension maybe it's dot displacement or dot dsp doesn't matter so when i'm teaching that i'm going to go over this again but for this tutorial we don't need that so we're just going to press ok and um, okay the next thing we are going to do is um, go to under um, export option if you click on export options you're going to get this under export option go to displacement map and um, 
you want this to be the same as the resolution you're going to export as your low this is your low res this is what me this what this means is right now we're in subdivision 5 and we want to bake subdivision 5 detail into subdivision 1 so we want subdivision 1 to have all the details that subdivision 5 has so if you are exporting you that, that means subdivision 1 is your low quality so that's what this means meaning that okay uh, you're telling ZBrush that this um, my low poly is subdivision one and I want you to take um, um, my displacement map uh, my subdivision five into my subdivision one you want this my baking level so that, I don't know if that makes sense so if you if you if you if you expected your low poly as um subdivision two which i usually do i don't actually export a subdivision one but just for the sake of this tutorial some people it doesn't really matter you're probably going to get the same result so if you're exporting at this level subdivision one you want this at subdivision one so let's say you're exporting a subdivision two you want this at subdivision two because that is your low poly now so be, if you do this if you put this at subdivision two and you export it at subdivision one <coughs> it won't work you get an error so make sure your low poly and your low poly um, um, mesh is the same this is really important so this is your mid value i usually put this at 0 0.5 this is just a gray value it doesn't really matter you just leave it at 0 0.5 and uh, scale to one intensity to zero now let's go to normal maps normal maps you want your tangent on smooth uvs as normal this usually are on automatically do not turn any other thing adaptive adaptive just doesn't really do much it just increase your ren your exporting time i don't i don't see the difference that tried it doesn't really too much now this is very important flip g if you work if you're going to be working in, in open gl you can you turn this off but if you're working with direct x like let's say you're working in unreal you want this to be on because it's going to be using the um, direct x so uh you want your flip g on and 3ds max i use 3ds max as my 3d program so i it uses direct x so i turn this on but i advise you to just use this except you're using OpenGL. anyways that's that now we have to create all maps you go back to creating all maps and this is gonna turn on you already see i've already done this so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna delete this so that we can do this again and and we're gonna just call this um we'll call this maps um ed maps let's put it uh, ed maps click save and um, ZBrush is going to do its thing. So you can see it just turned it to the lowest subdivision right here. And what it's trying to do is, okay, I'm, going, I'm trying to pick all that information from your high subdivision. I have to, I have to bring the subdivision to the, low the, the lowest subdivision and do some calculation. So that's what ZBrush is doing. ZBrush is calculating and it's analyzing. As you can see, analyzing normals. So uh, this shouldn't take long. Yeah, 0 0.59 yeah, seconds. So, which is pretty fast for something like this. So, we have our normal maps and we have our displacement map. And uh, what we need to do now is export our mesh, our low poly mesh. And I'm showing you my own method. Usually, what some people do is export their low poly and high poly, then they don't bake this map thing. Um, telling about you also explain just go to the substance paint and bake it over there which i don't do because it's, i get some errors and i have to do some cleaning work which i don't like doing anyways now you can what i usually do is export as obj and i go to 3ds max and export as fbx but for this tutorial i don't want to stress you guys i will just export here as fbx so i'm just going to make sure you're on the lowest subdivision and you go to export and uh we go to mesh and we'll call this add mesh and you can put an underscore sometimes this this programs they don't like spacing so press save file exported 
so we're good now we can go to substance painter so i'll see you guys in substance painter so guys we're in substance painter we're going to bring in our low poly mesh into substance painter so we'll go to file we're going to go to new and i usually leave this as metal roughness uh it's just a default exporting texture option you should just leave it at this and uh you don't need to touch this because you can actually change this later on the document res resolution so you can leave it you can put it at 4k wherever it doesn't really matter now normal map format this is important you remember when we we had zbrush and i told you to choose flip g this is where this is where it actually this is where we actually use that so because i said i'm using DirectX. I'm going to use FlipG. If you're using OpenGL, that means when you were exporting your normal maps, you didn't turn on FlipG. So I'm using DirectX and I'm turning on Flip. I turned on FlipG on my ZBrush, so you have to turn on FlipG when you're using DirectX. Just know that that's really, really important, guys. So now this way we're going to add our mesh. So we'll go to add and we'll go to where we save them. And let me see. Nope. And and go to maps and choose normal map. I'm not going to use displacement map. I don't really use it. And you could use it, but I don't use it. There's a trick because um, um, Substance Painter doesn't really do displacement map. But there's a way you can use it, but there's no point using it. So I'm not going to use it. So I'm just going to add only normal maps. And I'm going to select my mesh, the one we exported from uh, ZBrush and oops i'm always coming here and mesh and you can see add mesh and so we've exported now we can say okay so substance painter is going to read the mesh so you can see if you've not used substance painter before it's just like using maya the interface is the same old and um left mouse button to turn around alt and right mouse button to um, zoom in and the middle mouse alt and the middle mouse button to pan so uh yeah we got a mesh now, now we want to bake in our normal maps and we want to get all the details that we got in our zebra so now what we what i usually do is um, go to texture set search set settings and we go to big mesh now i turn off this and um, i turn off id because i'm not using any id and i leave them get occlusion i don't need thickness i don't think i use that and maybe i'll just do 4k yeah it doesn't really matter usually what people do is um, they put in their low poly here and uh, no, they put in their eye poly here rather, and then they bake the normal maps, which I don't do it because the result is not actually good. So if you if you're following my technique, just use bake mesh. So substance paint um, painter is going to start doing its job. It's going to work on everything and bake all the necessary maps that we need to work on our textures in substance painter, and uh, it shouldn't take long. Right now, it's baking the um, ambient occlusion. Now, it's baking the curvature map. You could actually bake all this map in in ZBrush, actually. You can actually bake the ambient occlusion, and you can now plug it in, which I do. I do. I bake this in Substance Painter, but I plug in my normal maps because I don't want to go through the baking. Normal maps, yeah, it's, it's, it's not that cool. So you see, we don't still have those details. So we are, what we need to do, you see, here we see select normal map. I can now select this map. You can see the name, Ed. Now, let's look at this. All our details, we can see them from ZBrush. It's there. So that's how I do it. That's how I do it, and it works perfectly. Gets everything done. Everything's looking nice. Okay, this zooming thing is looking weird. You want to fix this? Let me quickly fix this. And good camera. And no, just put this. Maybe. 
no 35 yeah okay okay so we can see this everything is there so that's how you do it guys <coughs> you can now texture your your character in substance painter and if you don't know how to texture your character in substance painter i've actually created a tutorial on how to texture a dark skin character in substance painter uh the link is down below and the uh, link should be up here yeah, somewhere so uh I hope you guys learned something that's how i do i export my low poly my um my eye poly into my low poly in um, in substance painter and that's how i work so i hope you learned something i'll see you guys in the next one like subscribe hit the notification bell so that you can get notified when i drop my new tutorial i try my best to bring two or three tutorials a week and uh I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.